All right. It's been a minute since we've had a dedicated Funimation video, but we're going to talk about them today because once again, they're making some changes to a dub. Now, I want to go over some stuff with them and we're going to the article does it as well towards the end. Uh, here's what they do. So, with their big properties like My Hero Academia, Drag well, Dragon Ball Z now, okay, with Super and Kai, they're actually pretty pretty close to what the actual scripts are. The original Toonami Dragon Ball Z uh, was very, very different from the original Japanese script. But they didn't insert stupid lines like this. So Funimation dub of You Know a Girl Who Chants Love at the Bound of This World changes dialogue to reference misogyny. Of course it does. So here's what they do. When it comes to big properties like My Hero Academia, for example, they keep it pretty close. They don't insert stupid stuff. They don't insert any political ideology, none of that. They keep it straight up. They keep it pure. They want the fans to be happy, you know. But when it comes to smaller things like this, smaller properties like this, you know, they'll, they'll make changes. They've done it with several other anime. Prison School comes to mind where they referenced Gamergate. So when they have smaller properties where people aren't really paying that close of attention, they'll go ahead and they'll play around with it. They've done it a couple of times, which I'll get to. There's some examples in this article. So this only hurts the dub fans, by the way. The subtitle fans, uh, they have no issues because they actually have a pretty decent translation team and they seem to take their job serious. I've never seen any examples of them changing dialogue I guess you can't really do that because they would easily get called out for changing the, the language translation, maybe. But anyway, dub fans, you always get the short end of the stick when it comes to these smaller properties. So let's go ahead and look at this article. Funimation has changed a line of dialogue in their dub of You Know a Girl Who Chants Love at the Bound of This World to infer that a character considered a mild insult to be misogynistic as opposed to the mild annoyance displayed in the original. So, I can't play the clip for obvious reasons because of copyright, even though it's not even that long, but let's let's not underestimate the pettiness of Funimation in some cases, like they did when they gave a shout out to Jamie Markey recently on their Twitter, and were like, hey, uh, we know a lot of you are hurting from that loss that you just had with Vic Mignogna, but hey fans, here's a big middle finger, we're going to double down, and uh, we're going to give Markey, uh, Jamie Markey a big shout out. Big shout out on Twitter, just to rub some salt in your face. Just kind of like Toei Animation, the North American Tony Anim Toei Animation did with Monica Real. I uh, don't see them shouting out voice actors regularly on their birthday, but hey, they managed to do it for her that day, didn't they? So anyway, on the first in the first episode of the 2019 anime series, a small but humorous interaction occurred between two of the show's characters. So it starts off like this. Yuki says, Wait, boss, you know a lot about Shimazu-san. Don't tell me. Amara comes in and says, No way in hell do I want to date that ice queen. Yuki says, Yeah, that's right. But you know, Shimazu-san's nice to everybody else, but she's really mean to you. Ah, Shimazu-san. Amara says, Hi, milady. Shimazu says, Stop calling me that, please. Amara says, Then how about my chan the school idol. Shimazu says, why do you make me so mad? And Amara says, not sure, that time of the month? And then she replies back and says, how crude. And that's the line, how crude. Now we go down to the Funimation version. And in the dub between the two characters, it's changed. So at the end, uh, it stays pretty close, like we see here. Sorry, do you prefer Queen of the World instead of Ice Queen? Now, changes like that are done for for good reason. Uh, the way the characters' mouths move, right? Sometimes the way it's said in Japanese doesn't fit with the English version. So they've got to make small changes. Those really aren't a big deal. It's got to be done so that, you know, it doesn't look stupid when they talk. Now, those aren't a big problem. Like, I never date that ice queen, calm down, you know. No way in hell do I want to date that ice queen was changed to calm down. I'd never date that ice queen. Not a big deal. But when you get to the end here, where you have not sure that time of the month, originally it's changed to a good question. Maybe it's just that time of the month. 
And then she says, ah, you're such a misogynist instead of how crude. Now, <laughs> I think you could have changed that a, a little bit differently. But of course, they're going to they're going to insert that into their stuff there. I mean, why not? It's a perfect it's a perfect opportunity for them to do that. And they've done it before a few times, always with smaller properties, never with big ones where it would cause an uproar. Funimation is very sneaky like that. So they go here. Here's some good examples they got in 2015. The dub of Prison School was changed by voice actor Tyson Reinhardt to directly accuse a character of being a Gamergate creep show. Uh, that one is uh, pretty viral, I think. A lot of people have seen that one. There's also in 2017, some dialogue was changed from another small anime where they came into a room and said, we got to stop those pesky patriarchal societal demands. That one was a huge difference between the original version. I used to have that clip, but I, I don't know where it is. And then another one, Interview with the Monsters in 2019, has bullies negatively accusing a character of being a social justice warrior for standing up to them. And then in another anime, they featured embarrassing references to speeches made by President Trump and strawman rhetoric, which equates those who enjoy anime fan service to jailbait-loving freaks who hate women. And where do we see people blasting fan service? Oh, that's right, on Reset Era, in Puritan Twitter, the NPC... SJWs are all over there all the time pulling their crap and they infest everything. Here they are messing with translations. Uh, there's a lot more than that. Funimation has so many crappy little properties that they can mess around with and do stuff like this that there's no real way to ever sit down and document all of it unless you had a team that could go through every single small little show. And I'm sure that there's quite a few. It's pretty disgusting that they can't just do their job and directly translate stuff. They just want to sit around and put their little ideologies into everything and stick it to those fanboys. And if you've got a problem with that, you got a problem that they changed this. And, you know, if you like fan service called you a, a woman hater or that you're a misogynist or a gamer gator, well, then you're a, you're an alt-right troll. So, yeah, you are a troll, if you disagree, and a supremacist, and they're going to call your job and get you fired if they know who you are. Just like they, Monica Real suggested people do to that umbrella guy on Twitter. Oh, we know where he works now. Maybe we should call his job. Anyway, that is it. Let me know what you guys think about this. Like and subscribe. Leave some comments. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit that notification bell, and I will see you guys on the next one, which will probably be in like three hours or so <laughs> because I got another video I want to put out today. And then I am going to enjoy my Saturday. I hope you guys enjoy your Saturday or whatever day it is that you happen to find this video. And I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.